Good day, student. I do welcome you to this uh, presentation. Uh, it's a familiar face to you because most of you I'm going to talk to you now, you are taking computer literacy two. It means you have already done computer literacy one. So I'm not new to you. Uh, I'm a familiar uh, face to you. So it's nice to be with you, my beloved student. I love all of you very much. I use this opportunity again to welcome you to 2019, your year of success, the year you are going to make it. I'm already pastor, so stop saying amen, because I'm saying the year you are going to make it, your success, you are going to already saying amen. I, but I wish you the best in this 2019, although I'm not a pastor, but I know you will make it. All of us will make it, including the Edu also. But what you are going to make, I don't know. Okay, that is a joke, by the way. I congratulate you for haven't passed computer literacy one. It shows that you're a committed student, you're a serious student who knows what he or she wants here at IUL. Don't always forget, IUL, the best institution on earth when it comes to distance education. And uh, at IUL, we teach others to copy. We take the lead, others follow. Okay, this is computer literacy examination-based presentation for 2019. You've done your assignment, you pass your assignment, that is why you are qualifying to write this examination. You can't write the examination without assignment. So for you to have uh, be one of the candidates to write this assignment uh, examination, it means you already passed your examination. That's when I congratulate you and I say, good job, my friend, for passing the assignment. Now let's get down to the deal. Let's get down to the business. Let's see what you expect in this examination. By now, as a computer literacy student, uh, you're already used to the way I ask most of my questions, the tricks, and the, on how to go about them. That's why I said it's a little bit easier for you in computer literacy too, because the terrain is a familiar terrain. But the familiar terrain sometimes can be challenging too, as you know. All right, beloved student, this presentation is for who? It's for diploma in junior primary education. Those taking diploma in junior primary education DJPE CL12 and Diploma in Secondary Education DSE CL21. Why do I always put this slide, the first one? The reason is this as you know, though there's computer literacy one, there's computer literacy two, there's computer literacy for pre primary, so there's computer literacy for policing. Virtually all the courses at IOL have computer literacy because this is computer age. You can't be left behind. Okay? But you need to be careful that the presentation that you are listening to or the presentation that you are downloading or will download is the right one. That is why I put this slide for you to know which one is yours. So if you are a student for Diploma in Junior Primary Education, DJPE CL12, or Diploma in Secondary Education, DSE CL21, yes, this presentation is for you. So sit down, relax, and listen to me. Don't be distracted. Please keep off your phones. Stop that SMS or that WhatsApp. Otherwise, your mind will be divided. I want you to be focused hmm? so that you can get the message clear. All right. You've done your assignment. The assignment and the examination almost the same format, so it's not going to be something too strange to you. So this presentation is for 2019, April, August, and November. Meaning there is not going to be a different presentation apart from this one. So this presentation covers August, November, April examination. Okay, what should you expect? Because it is time for examination. Before we go into what should be expected, are you ready? What shows that you are ready? If you are ready, just tell your neighbor, uh-huh, uh-huh. Tell your neighbor, uh-huh, uh-huh. Tell your neighbor you are ready. Ready to do what? For the examination. Good. If you are ready, let's go. This presentation is not an examination scope, but a guide. So, 
As you know, we don't give scope at IOL. We guide you. So don't come back at the end of the examination. Immediately you finish from the examination hall. You take your phone. You know, it happens at times. Students just finish from the examination. They take the phone. They call Mr. Edu. Mr. Edu, Bert. Bert what? That question one, that question two is not in your presentation. Selma, Lucas, my brother and sister, this presentation is not a scope. It's to guide you. Né? So don't expect that I'm going to tell you here question that you should expect. I will tell you how to answer question that will come. So I'm not here to give you question. If I give you question, it's no longer an examination. Nah. Okay. As usual, in computer literacy, you are expected to answer all the questions. So all the questions that will be given to you, you must answer them. But for you to answer the question the way they should be answered, you see, I always tell my students, it is one thing to know the, something, it is another thing to explain it, the way it should be explained. That is why you teachers, we teachers, including me, I'm a teacher, I love my work, you know. We teachers are different from others. I can study computer science from the university, and I might not be a teacher. Meaning, I don't have that ability to explain to people very well. So, a student might know something, but will not, at times, explain it the way the tutor wants it in the examination. So it is very necessary for you to go back to your study guide. Here is my study guide. Here is your study guide. Can you see now? I'm sure you have this either in a electronic format or a hard copy. Now in this study guide, all study guide of IOL, they have, I think it's page nine, I'm not very sure, but let's open and see. I'm opening like I'm opening the Bible eh, in the church. Okay, let's see on page uh, 11 here. Yeah, on page 11. I don't know the page is going to be on your, your iPad or your laptop if you have the electronic version, the e version. But the subtitle is Meaning, Meanings of Thinking Required by Verb. It's all about the various verbs that we use when it comes to examination. But why is this necessary? Why is it necessary for you to familiarize yourself with these verbs that are here? Why it is necessary, I'm going to tell you. In an examination, if I ask you, define internet, explain internet, Discuss internet. The question goes around that word internet, internet, internet. But I expect different things. For example, if I say define internet, explain internet, it's a different thing I'm expecting from you here. So to define is, is different from what you are going to discuss. You understand what I'm saying now? So you need to really do that, please, my beloved student. Read and study those verbs. For example, you say evaluate. What does it mean to evaluate? Summarize. You see, you really need to. Because I've seen students that they have good points, but the way they gave the answers made them to fail. I don't want you to go in that direction. I want you to learn from the mistakes of others. Okay? So i leave that one for you to do in your study guide. Where will my questions of computer literacy come from? It will come from the module, but where in the module? Cannot tell you where the questions are coming from? All the units. If you look at your study guide, you have unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, Unit 5, Unit 6, Unit 7, Unit 8. So Computer Literacy 2 has Unit 1 to 8. So the question covers all these units. So do not ignore or look down 
on any unit in an assumption that Christians will not come out from this unit. Don't do so. Prepare yourself around the whole Moldu with all the units. Do you understand? Yes. What else is going to help you, students? Your assignments. How will your assignment help you? Both your assignment and the examination, they have the same format. What does that mean? The way your, examination, your assignment questions are structured, in the same way the, uh, uh, the, 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 the examination questions will be also structured. The only difference that you are going to see here when it comes to computer literacy is that in your assignment, Remember, I gave you practical work on Microsoft Excel. I gave you practical work on, um, on if I remember, Microsoft Publisher. Okay? I gave you some practical work to do so that you will be able to work on the computer and print them out. But now, if it comes to the, to the examination hall or during the examination, you are not going to work on the computer, but... I'm going to examine you the practical skills that you already acquired. They are not going to be a practical section, but I will examine you on the practical skills that you have acquired. For instance, in your assignment, I must have given you work on how to work on Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to test you some questions on Microsoft Excel to see if actually you can work on Microsoft Excel. So, don't ignore your practical section of your assignment. Don't allow someone do the practical work for you of your assignment. Otherwise, your case would be like that student who scores 99% of the assignment. That is, in the assignment, he scores 99 over 100. Then when it comes to the examination, he or she is called 10 over 100. Why? She or he was not the one who did the practical work. Now I'm going to ask questions. He or she cannot answer the questions. Too bad. To save yourself from that problem, what should you do? Make sure you are involved in the doing of your practical work. Do you understand? Yes. What else is going to help you when it comes to your assignment? I mean, to your examination, come 2019. Past examination question papers. That is a secret. Ne? It's a secret. Keep it. Past examination question papers. If you go to your IOL student portal, there you can download past examination question papers. The question papers are similar in structure and in format. So by the time you go through your past examination question papers, you already know how questions in this modules, in this module rather, are being asked. Take 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, examination question paper. Go through them and see if you can answer them. Can I tell you something? Your course outline is the same. It has not changed until it is being reviewed. So until the course outline is being reviewed, it means the format, the structure of the question, more or less is going to remain the same. So the past examination question paper will guide you on how the question looks like. What else is going to help you when it comes to this examination come 2019? Is what we call the tutor feedback. At the end of every assignment, at the end of every examination, a tutor compiles mistakes that were made by students and recommend how to avoid such mistakes. 
For example, while marking examination question papers or while marking examination, I mean assignment papers, I will see mistakes that are being made by students. I summarize the mistakes, then I give you a recommendation that this question should not be approached this way. This question should rather be approached this way. This is the best way to approach this question. So my feedback is very necessary. But unfortunately, most students overlook the feedback as something not necessary. A feedback is very necessary. Look at the feedback. Learn from the mistakes of others so that you don't fall into the same pit they fell into. Don't learn by coming to learn in the examination hall. It will be like a situation of a blind man leading a blind man. Both of them will fall inside the pit. So, take that advice very serious. Past examination question papers and the total feedback of previous examinations. But a word of caution which I want to give to all of you, my beloved students, is this. Do not download a past question examination paper and email it to me to answer and send it back to you. Are you examining me here? Are you? So don't download examination question paper and send it to Edu for Edu to answer everything and send it to you. No. You practice with this. You try to answer those questions. When you come across problems that you cannot solve, then contact me to guide you on how to go about it. It was kind of, I think this year, last year, a student sent me about three past examination question paper and asked me to answer everything and say, I say, it does not work this way. You are a distant student. I'm there to guide you. Another thing that will guide you or will help you in this examination 2019 is, when should you start to prepare? Today. Tomorrow might be too late. Why must you start preparing today? You have enough time to prepare. Look at what I told you. The study guide has eight units. It's a big book. There is not a book you can finish within one, two, three, four days. Not even one week. It's not like computer literacy one. You can complete this book even in one month. I'm talking about to study it. I'm not talking about reading it. To study this book thoroughly, to know what this book really is, you cannot complete this in one month. So for you to be effective, for you to really know what you are doing in this course, start today. There are eight units there. Why not take one unit a week, depending on how your time is? Because I understand some of you are family men and women. You have children, spouses to take care of. And uh, we don't want a situation where what God has joined together, computer want to put aside. No, I won't be part of that. But at the same time, make time for your study. Start now. Okay, let's go into the technical areas. In computer literacy 2, you have 10 multiple choice questions across all the units. Tell multiple questions across all the units. So I told you already we have eight units in that study guide. If you look at your study guide, I'm very sure. Let me just have a look at it for the last time. There are eight units in that study guide. So these ten multiple choice questions cut across the eight units. Now the question is this. For example, if you don't read unit five and there is a question from unit five, how will you answer that question? You see? How will you? I don't know. You see? So it is necessary for you to read everything. Apart from the multiple choice questions, what else should you expect? Just like what you did in computer literacy one, the same thing will repeat itself again. There will be various terms, knowledges, 
various ways that are selected across all units for you to define, to explain, to discuss, as the case may be. For example, phishing, BCC, internet, email, computer virus, cookies, website. What is the difference between a web page and a website? What is a home page? What is different between a malware and a spyware? Search engine, UPS. I want to make something very clear here. Let's focus on, uh, let me pick one example there. Like, uh, okay, let me pick uh, BCC, okay? The first one there, BCC. If you look at that word, it's not a word. If you look at BCC, it is written as, as it is written in capital letter. B in capital, C in capital, C again in capital letter. It is not a word on its own. It is not a word on its own. It's an acronym. Meaning, each alphabet in that acronym stand for a word. B stand for blind. C stand for carbon. Why C again stand for copy? So when you see such concept, what you must do first of all is for you to give the meaning of the concept of the acronym right there. So first of all, you tell me B C C stand for Blind carbon copy. After telling me what that acronym stands for, you can now move ahead. You can now proceed to explain what it means. So there are quite a lot of them in your study guide. So from this study guide, I can pick any concepts and ask you to explain what it means, to define what it means. Beside the explanation, beside the definition to discuss, what else do you, should, you explain, what should you expect when it comes to the examination? There will be a variety of different questions at different lengths that you will be expected to explain in the examination. I want to spend a little bit of time on Microsoft Excel here because if you look at your study guide in Computer Literacy 2, the first unit is on Microsoft Excel. The first unit of your study guide of uh, Computer Literacy 2 is on Microsoft Excel. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on Microsoft Excel to explain to you how to answer Microsoft Excel question. Remember, you did a practical work of Microsoft Excel. Here, you are not going to do a practical work, but I'm going to ask you questions on what you know already. So how do you, you answer questions when it comes to Microsoft Excel? Are you there? Good. Just put on a little bit of a smile. It's good for your health. Okay? I didn't say you should laugh. I don't know. What is the difference between laughing and uh, smiling? Just smile a little bit. In case you don't know how to smile, just say, Moshe. Say it again. Moshe. Yeah, give it a little of a smile. Life is so sweet. Life is nice. So don't get stressed about computer literacy. Okay? Alright. Let us look at Microsoft Excel. Let me take you through one sample question so that you know how to answer the question. If you look at the screen, there you see an example of uh, a question from Microsoft Excel. It has columns. It has rows. For example, if I ask you, the columns are the side where you have the alphabet. The columns are the side where you have the alphabet. That is where you have the A, B, C. You see? This is column A, all right? Column B, column C, column D. Those are the columns. But I want you to look at one place here. Where you have these one, two, Three. Why is this is this one a column? This is not a column. Every column, I repeat, every column must have an alphabet. So if I ask you how many columns are here, they are one, two, 
three, four, four columns. You don't count this one as a column because it has no alphabet. Not because it has one, two, three, no, because it has no alphabet. So it's very easy. It battles me at times when students, when I ask students at times, how many columns are here? They are not able to tell me. Just for you to count. The vertical lines. The vertical lines are your columns. Then how many rows are here? There are seven rows. Row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see? Now, let us look at some sample questions on Microsoft Excel. Sample questions. Number one, how many columns are there in the spreadsheet? Answer, four columns. Two, how many rows are there in the spreadsheet? Answer, seven. Seven. Another question. Name a cell that has a value. What is a value? A value simply means numbers. So any number that you see in a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel is a value. Then if we say label, labels are alphabet, the letters. The letters are labels. Now, if I say name a cell that has a value, name a cell that has a label. Let's go back to the spreadsheet. First, let's look for a cell that has a label. A label is where there is alphabet. Look at this one. Name of fruit juice is a label because they are alphabets. So you can tell me cell A1. Cell a2, cell A3, cell A4. Any cell where there is alphabet, any cell where there are letters, those are labels. Now, any cell where there is a number, any cell where there is a number, we refer to them as value. So, for example, B2. B3, B4, these are cells that contain value. How do you write them for me? Let me write, for example, name a cell that contains a value. I can write here, okay, B4. Can you see that now? Then... Right for me before, you are right. But if you write for B, then you are wrong. The alphabet comes before the number. Then don't write like this. For example, B, okay, let me put it for the screen. Don't write B4, then you put the 4 as a subscript. No. Or put the 4 as a superscript. No. It must be in front of it. B4. Do you understand it now? So, if I ask you to write a cell that contains a value, alphabet before the number. Ashiri, good. Let's look at another sample question. Write down the formula used in cell D2. Here, the use of formulas. I know it poses a lot of challenges to most students about the use of formulas in Excel. But let me give you a very simple way of solving it. Let's say, for example, write down a formula that should be in cell D2. D2. What should you do? 
for you to get this correctly. You go back to the table. Go back to the table. Remember D2. So let's go to D2. Look for cell D2. Where is D2? This is D2. Can you see it here? D2 because it is in column D and row 2. So D2. But the question is, write a formula that should be in cell D2. That is, which formula was used in calculating this answer? Here, you have to think. How did we get 17,5? What did we do to get 17,5? Look at the heading. Here it says, amount sold. Here it says, the price per bottle. So for one bottle, it's $3.50. How many did I sell? Quantity sold. I sold five. So what is the total amount with me? A common sense, mathematically speaking, is that I use this 3,50 to multiply this 5 to get this. That is what was done to get this 17,5. But this is not a mathematics class. It's a computer class. We're asking for the formula used. So how will you write this answer? This, remember what we said? We multiply this 3,50 by this 5. So in writing your answers, your formula, you don't write the numbers that are there. You write the name of the cells, where the numbers are. So, how do you write it? For you to write a formula, the first thing you must write is equal sign. Every formula must start with equal sign. Equal sign. You must write the equal sign. After the equal sign, then you start with the formula now properly. Now, if we go back now, we said we multiply 3,50 by 5. 3,50 is in which cell? 3,50 is in this cell. Can you look at the cell? Let me point to it. What is the name of this cell? What is the name of the cell? Can you guess? Don't guess. Tell me the answer. This is cell B2. Can you see it now? It's cell B2. This is B2. So it is B2 multiply. Can you see that now? B2 I did not write 3,50. Mm -mm. Write the name of the cell where that number is. Don't write the number. Write the name of the cell where the number is. Multiply by what now? Let's go back to the table. Let's go back to the table. Want to multiply it by 5. And where can you find 5? Can you see? It's 5. This is C2. So you put C2. That is the formula that was used to obtain the answer that you find in cell D2. So what am I going to look at? What is going to help you in writing your formulas? First of all, start with the equal sign. Very necessary. Then after that, the cells where the numbers are is what you should write. Do not write the numbers. Except, I repeat, except if that number has no cell. Except if that number has no cell. So my beloved student, you are going to see questions. In fact, after the multiple choice, the next question you will sell is from Microsoft Excel, which is going to take 10 marks. So the common questions when it comes to Microsoft Excel are, how many columns are here? How many rows are here? Tell me a cell that has a value. Tell me a cell that has a label. And which formula can be used to calculate these or these or these? These are common questions that you are going to see in Microsoft Excel. It is common. Just like we used to say in education, that is a common sense. That is not common in a common place for common people for common reasons. Good.
All right? After that, what else should you expect after Microsoft Excel? If you look at the screen, can you label your Microsoft Excel screen? It is there in your study guide. So don't say, Mr. Ido, where can I get this? It is there in your study guide. Can you label? Can you identify those components and label them accurately? Hmm. One thing can help you. And what is that thing? Practice. Practice and practice. Again, option one, practice. Option two, practice. Option three, practice. The last option, practice. If you practice, then you will know. If you don't practice, if you don't study, you don't know. That is why I said, you're going to pass by examination this year. I can guarantee you that. But terms and conditions apply. Practice, study. Let's move ahead to the next thing. PowerPoint screen. Can you label a PowerPoint screen? What various components of the screen can be used for in PowerPoint? Remember I gave you an assignment about PowerPoint, which you did and you passed. So, can you remember those buttons of PowerPoint? What you use them for? Can you label? Can you? I'm not going to ask you to draw it. But if there is a possibility, I can ask you to label. I don't know. It's a possibility. Any question can come from the study guide. You can never tell. So, since you can never tell what is the secret, be prepared for anything. You never know what you are going to meet. But what you are going to meet is in the study guide. Some other things that you should get prepared for. Everything in the study guide, as I always say. But what if I ask you to state the steps to create a PowerPoint? Remember in your assignment, you created a PowerPoint for me and you printed it out. Now if I ask you, what are the steps to use in creating a PowerPoint? Can you explain it to me? What is the difference between a free will and a share will? What are the advantages of internet in education? What are the disadvantages of internet in education? What are the advantages of internet in our society? Do you use internet? I'm sure you do use internet. What advantages does it give to you? Can you explain? Whenever I ask you about the advantages of internet, about the advantages of computer, please mention the point and explain. And do not miss them up. I always say that. Please do not miss up your points. If you talk about advantages of computer in education, good. Student can use computer for making research. Fine. Explain. So that you can have your full marks. Are you happy? I want you to be happy. Because I'm a happy person. Computer literacy love people who are happy. Be happy. Why? Because you are going to pass. But remember, terms and conditions apply. And what are those terms and conditions? Study, study, and practice. What else should you expect? Have you read your study guide while doing my assignment? Did you come across things like email? Can you send an email? When you send an email, at times you have a signature attached to your email. What I mean by signature, not necessarily for you to sign. You see an email, for example, I send you an email, then at the bottom of that email, you automatically see my name, where I work, my phone number, and the email, and all those things, that kind of a signature that identifies me. How can it be added? How do you send an email with an attachment? What if you are working on Microsoft Publisher? Where do you get your pictures from? These are things that you have done in your assignment practically, but I want you to practice them over and over because I'm likely I'm going to test you, going to examine you come April, August, and November. Do you have a password? Is there a password on your phone? Nah. I don't know. Why do people put password? Don't ask me. I don't have a password on my phone, so don't ask me. Why do people put password on my on phone? Sorry, I have a password on my phone. Let me not lie, so that God don't punish me. <laughs> Why do people put password? What is the purpose of a password? 
not what you are thinking. I'm not thinking that. That is the purpose of a password. <laughs> I'm not thinking the purpose of a password. Don't put words into my mouth. Okay? You know why you put password on your phone. In computer, why you put password, you know why you put the password. Now, here comes another question. What makes a password effective? What makes a password really strong that people cannot really guess? What is your phone password? Don't tell me because I'm not with you. If you read your study guide, there are some suggestions that are given to people who use cell phones, who use computers and systems on how to create a strong password that people cannot easily guess. Remember when smartphone came newly, when smartphone were new and you have this pattern, there's a very common pattern. You remember what is the common pattern? The Z, ne? very common pattern. That is not a strong password. People know that's a very common one. So, what makes a password a strong one? Can you read it from your study guide? That there is this concept also when it comes to internet, Netscape and Dreamweaver. What makes the difference between them? And whenever I ask you to differentiate what is the difference between two concepts, please, the difference must be clear. If I say what is the difference between these and these, do not just give me the definition. If you do that, you have not really given me the difference. When you are asked to state the difference between these and these, it must be crystal clear. Do you understand that now? What is the difference between top score and mehangu? Hmm? Most of them are maize, from maize. But what difference do you, can you see? Okay, one is brown, one is white. If you look at top score, and mehangu is a little bit brown. The top score is a little bit white. So you should be able to tell me when it comes to, when I ask you what is the difference between these two consent, do not just define. You should be able to tell me, okay, I can say this one here, but I can say this one here. Or this one is here, and this one is here. So I can say, oh, this is the difference between these and this. Understand? Yes. Any question? You can send your questions to me later. Now, when it comes to email, have you ever sent an email before? When you send an email, do you observe some of those things like attachment? What does it mean? What about CC, carbon copy? What about BCC, blind carbon copy? What is the difference between carbon copy and blind carbon copy? If I BCC you or I CC you, what difference does, it, does, does exist there? And why is it necessary to have a subject for email that are sent? Can you explain to me a little bit? I'm waiting for those answers. Come April, August, and November examination. Okay, let's go into the second aspect of your study guide, of your course outline, of your model. Here is your study guide. If you look at your study guide, it has eight units, as I told you, eight units. Part of it is computer literacy. The other part is library concept, library science. If you look at your study guide, if you have also read the policy of the study of computer literacy, you see, if you have really read it, and from the beginning since you started this program, your assignment policy, you will see it very clear that computer literacy takes 80%. Why the library science takes 20%. So if you see me asking you questions a little bit about library science, don't say, but this is not a computer. It is computer. Library is now a digital world. Do you understand it now? Library now is digital world. So we have 20% of the questions from library science, basic information science, then we have 80% of computer literacy. So now I'm going to focus on the library science of the course outline or the module. The first thing I'm going to focus on is how do you write a story? Ne? How do you write a story? Have you ever written a story before? Or do you listen to stories? Stories are quite interesting, you know? Z-word. I'm sure that's where your mind goes to, Z-word. 
Come on. Leave that Z word if you want to pass. I'm telling you. Leave what? Z word. Focus on your examination for now. Nah. <laughs> okay, that is a joke, by the way. So, now, how do you write a story based on a given picture? What does it mean? I give you a picture. Now, I want you to write a story based on that picture. Now, this problem that uh, students always have here is that they try to describe the picture for you. Let's go into reality here. I want you to look at this picture. Can you see that picture? Now, I ask you, write a story here based on this picture. What is expected of you here? Let me tell you what to do. Listen to me. If you are going to write a story based on this picture, I'm not asking you to describe the picture for me. Don't tell me there are boys, there are girls, there is a house, there is this, there is this. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you to describe the picture. I want you to develop a short story that illustrates what that picture is saying. Do you understand? Yes. Let me give you an example of how to go about it. I'll give you a story now, based on this picture. I can say, once upon a time, in my village, in my school, after the school examination, the student organized a party. And in that party, two boys from a class, they are the DJ. All the learners are in a party mood. The DJ is crashing the disc. Chuka 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 chuka. And everybody in the party mood dancing. So what am I trying to do here? I am describing, I'm right, I mean, sorry, not describing, I'm developing a story based on the picture. Do you understand that now? So if you see a question that says that you should develop a story, please, please, as I believe, do not describe the picture for me. Write a short story based on that picture. Remember those short stories that we used to learn when we were small. Okay? Now, in writing the story, what are the things, some of the things that will help you? Let me give you some of the things that will help you. Your introduction is very necessary. A good introduction. Why is a good introduction very good for a good story? Because it's going to arouse my interest. Can you see that now? The introduction will arouse my interest. So the way you introduce your story is very necessary for the reader of your story. You know, it's going to put me on suspense. I want to see what this story is all about. So give me a good introduction. That is something the examiner will look at. What else will help you in this story? Develop the content. Let me see the point in that story. Then again, have a good conclusion. When you are writing your story, apart from a good introduction that you have, when I read the content of your story, does your story really illustrate? Does your story really tell the picture? Does your story really text the picture? Then your conclusion is also very necessary. How are you going to conclude this story? You can conclude in various ways. Maybe a moral lessons we we'll learn from this story. You can conclude with a proverb. Give me a conclusion that is appropriate. Don't just write the story and just a full stop. Conclude very well. Something else that we look for when it comes to the story writing is we look at your English here. This is not an English class. I'm not perfect when it comes to an English. But we look at your tenses, your grammar. Because if you write a word wrongly, or if you misused a word, or you use a word in a wrong way, it changes the, the, the content, it changes the meaning of your story. 
So watch out for your spellings. Watch out for your good use of grammar. So you might say that in the examination. Another thing that you might also pay attention to when you are writing uh, a story, be consistent in writing your story. Don't start talking about Vinduk, all of a sudden you start talking about New York. How you connect the story together, I'm lost. Be consistent, be logical in your storytelling. What else can you expect from the library concept, the library science aspect of your syllabus, I mean your course outline, excuse me, from your module also? Can you write a form, I mean, a reference? Remember when you do an assignment, you will this what we call the APA format of writing a reference. So if I give you a book, the title of the book, the author of the book, the publishing company of the book, and I ask you to write a, a reference, will you be able to write it? These and many other things I will expect from you when it comes to computer literacy two, the other aspect, that is the basic information science, you must know all these things. What, again, remember about Microsoft Publisher, Internet and Email, all these, nothing should be ignored. Remember I said, you can pass your examination, but what are the conditions for you to pass? First option, study your book. Second option, study the book. Third option, study the book. The last option, study the book. Study. Now, don't wait till tomorrow. You are a distant student, you don't meet me, you don't see me most times. You need my help. I'm here to help you. I'm paid to help you. So, you can contact me on my cell phone number. Send me an SMS. I will call you. Or send me an email. I will reply to you. My number remains the same, 081-480-4091. Or send an email to me. I will reply to you. I wish you all the best. In your 2019 examination, be it April, August, or November examination. But in case you write the April examination, you could not meet up, try again in August. You write the August examination, you did not meet up, I don't want to use the word fail. You don't meet up 50% of the examination mark, try again. Don't give up. Winners don't give up. Continue trying. One day, you become victorious and you become the teacher that you want to be. I wish you all the best in your examination. I love you all. My name remains Edo. Thank you.